I've been trading for eight years now, and once I implemented this change into my trading, I saw a complete difference in how I executed. And it had to do with what time frame that I was trading with. I started taking better entries and exits. I wasn't getting stopped out of trades. And my risk to reward became a lot better by implementing this time frame into my trading. So the first thing we have to understand is what time frame should we use and what story is it telling us about the market? Now, no matter if you use a two minute, five minute, 30 minute, I'm gonna explain what is the best for me, but no matter what time frame you use, the data that the market is presenting will always be the same. Here we have a five minute chart and we can see a clear rejection noted by these green lines of three different attempts prior to a long extended drop to the downside. Now to the right side is the same exact chart. However, on each 30 minute candle, it's going to show us six five minute candles. So the charts are different, but the data is the same. On the 30 minute chart, we can see three different candles that ha also has rejected those prices followed by a very large drop to the downside. So regardless of no matter what time frame you use, the data will always be the same. Price and volume does not change. What caused the market to reject here at these highs? So we see a high of 5,066.50. On a five minute chart or a 30 minute chart, what caused that high to form and what caused the market to sell off does not change regardless of the time frame. Just as you flip through a five minute, 30 minute, four hour, the data will be organized a little differently. The best thing that's helped me is understanding the type of time frame trader you are. If you're a day trader, maybe you're looking to capitalize on a move that's going to happen in the next two or three hours, or you're a trend trader, the market's making higher highs and higher lows, and you want to capitalize on the bullish uptrend. Well, then higher time frame will work out for you the best because you're not so concerned about what's happening in the near short term present moment or past moment. If you're a short term scalper or a day trader, smaller time frame is going to work out for you the best because you're so concerned on what's occurring in the near future and the closest past moment. If you're a long term investor and you're looking to hold, let's just say Tesla for the next five years. Well, you're not going to care what's happening on a 30 minute chart if you're in it for the long run and looking to capitalize on the next bullish uh, rally up. So knowing how you are trading and knowing the type of time frame trader you are is vital because no matter what time frame you use, it's simply going to represent the perception of the market participants and the perception of the prices in that specified time. If you're scalping and you're looking to capitalize on what's going to happen in the next five minutes, then you're not going to be so concerned on a 30 minute chart. Or if you're a trend trader and you're watching the trend form on a 30 minute chart, you're not going to be so concerned on a one minute chart. So understanding the trader you are is key in developing the best time frame to use. Also briefly, we have to understand how the market moves. So simply prices change due to buying and selling efforts. Prices don't change because a five minute chart had a really large green candle to the upside or prices don't sell off because we see a really large drop and a really bloody red candle to the downside. Prices simply change and the root cause and the underlying effect to it is because traders who are buying and selling and transacting. So price affects volume and volume affects price and we can read this by the transactions or the number of traders size buying or selling. So now going back to economics class 101, supply and demand. If demand exceeds supply, then simply the market moves up. If we have a greater demand for a product, but not enough supply, then simply the market has to raise its prices to meet the demand of buyers. And regardless of the time frame, we are going to see this with a green candle. Five minute, one minute, one hour. If demand exceeds supply in that specified time, we are going to see a green candle up because what a green candle tells us is the market closed higher than where we opened at. Just to visually see this, if the market moves down, we form that red candle down. What that means volume wise, because again, how price affects volume. This is the key aspect to this, that no matter the time frame. If the market goes down, that means there are more aggressive sellers 
then there are passive buyers. So if you see a move down, that means there are more traders taking liquidity away from the market than there are traders putting liquidity on the market for sale. And if you really want to dig deeper, why these candles do form is because of the volume getting transacted behind the scenes. Essentially, look at a candle as a closed curtain. We don't know what's going on behind the stage. But as soon as the candles are opened and we can see behind the driving forces of what's opening the curtain, we're going to know what's going on behind the scenes and behind the stage. And that is when the best trades can be put on. So why this candle or why the market moves down is because there are more selling activity than there is buying activity. Flip it now. If the market moves up and the market forms a green candle, that means there are more aggressive buyers than passive sellers, regardless of that time frame. You can validate this by looking at the volume transacted of that candlestick chart. So now going back to this, if you want to pause the video, screenshot this, these are essentially the time frames that I use to chart levels of interest developed only from a candlestick chart. Now this is the time frame that I use to trade. This is what I call the now. Now I'm very big into the present moment because as traders, we're not so concerned about the past. We are not so caught up in what's going to happen in the future. We are concerned about now because I am a short term scalper in the market. I'm looking to capitalize on very short term price fluctuations. I don't care what happens tomorrow. I don't care what happens in the next six hours. I care what's going on right now because that is going to be the best information that the market is presenting to me. So when people ask me, hey, Carmine, what time frame do you use to confirm your setups? What time frame chart do you use to buy or sell? The time frame that I use is the now. And you are not going to find the now from a candlestick chart because the now could only be displayed by understanding the buying and selling activity that's entering the market at this second in the present moment of the now. So the time frame chart that I use and I found to work out for me the best is the time frame of the now via the order flow or reading how price responds or price reflects the volume transactions occurring and entering or exiting the market. The now gives me all the information that I need. So let's just say we see Tesla breaking above a resistance level. It's starting to move up. The buying is very strong. The volume is entering the market. Then I'm going to get in right at that moment. I'm not going to be waiting for, let's just say, a five-minute chart to break out and close. Or I'm not going to wait for a 15-minute chart to show me a lower wick indicating that I should get in. No, I'm getting in when I see the now or I see the buying volume transacting saying, Hey, Carmine, there's buyers here buying above your resistance level. Let's get in right now and put risk on. Now, this also helps me and protects me from not getting faked out. When you use a candlestick chart, it's very easy to get faked out. You are prone to more fake outs with the candlestick chart than you are with the tape. Now, I still get faked out. There still are setups that I enter in and they don't work and I lose on it and my interpretation of that data was incorrect. However, it puts me in the position where the probabilities are in my favor more than a candlestick chart. So if I was looking to get long Tesla above its resistance level, I can't see if that rally up and that green candle up was on weak buying. What I mean by that is you could have sellers who are willing to sell at higher prices that make the market gravitate higher, making it look strong, but it's really not strong at all. And there's a seller in the market looking to get in at higher prices because he wants to sell at the highest price possible. Something that we cannot see on a time frame candle chart. Relying on a time frame does not validate what's causing the market to rally and break that resistance level. The market doesn't rally up and break that resistance because the five minute was a green candle. The market rallies up and breaks that resistance level because the buying was aggressive. However, let's just say the buying is not aggressive and it's really weak, then I would not be buying that breakout. This all gets confirmed in the now or in that present moment. So this is a really good example of this. I see a lot of traders mark highs, mark lows, and they automatically get long or short if it breaks that obvious resistance level. Now, how many of you have ever bought a breakout up, breakout down? As soon as you get in, the market reverses and you stop out for a loss. Let me know in the comments, number one. But number two, 
If you were to use some sort of confirmation by the volume, you would not get faked out as easily. Obvious levels are prone for areas to build liquidity for other traders who are smart by reading the volume to take that liquidity, reverse the setup, and them to profit and you to lose on it. Even myself. In this example, we can see the market breaking above 5045 is this purple line. Now looking at the time in sales, which is a tool that represents the volume getting transacted at specified prices. Every single one of these prices here is right at this 5,045 level when we broke above it around 1130 to about 12 o'clock Eastern time. Directly breaking out above this level, if we were to wait for a five minute chart, let's just hypothetically speak and we don't know what happens next, but we take the market long just here because it breaks our resistance level for no other reason than we see a green candle. Well, validating what I've been saying so far, you would have seen a flurry of selling activity directly above this resistance level. Number one, that would have prevented me from taking a long trade, so it's a defensive mechanism. And number two, it may have caused me to get confirmation to say, hey Carmine, let's short this move above resistance because a lot of people will be buying it, but we are trading with smarter participants that we are looking to short it and capitalize on a downside move. Even looking at a horizontal volume, the volume did not increase here at all. In fact, the volume kept decreasing as the market was rallying and breaking up much higher as well. When I talk about the now, this is what I'm talking about. This cannot be qualified in a time frame. This could be qualified of what's happening right now, and you're not going to be able to see that from a chart, from a candlestick chart. Also, I see a lot of traders saying, okay, let me wait for a candlestick to close for me to long a move. They see the market rallying, they wait for the level to break, and they say, okay, the five minute candle just closed here. Let me get long right here because the five minute candle closed. Waiting for a candle to close, what does that have to do with validating if that move is strong or if that move is weak? What does a time frame have to say if buyers or sellers are strong? Because what if a candle closes right at that level, but the volume is still rejecting? Let's just say you're looking at a five minute chart and the market breaks out on four minutes and 45 seconds of that candle, meaning we have 15 seconds left until that candle closes. But because it happened in the last 15 seconds before that candle bar closes, you are getting it long just because of time. For me, that data is skewed because you cannot read the volume. The volume would have told me that it is still rejecting. Time has nothing to do with invalidating a trading thesis. Unless you're using a market profile, time does not have much influence on the analysis volume compared to price does. I'm pretty curious. How many of you wait for a candlestick close to stop you out of a trade? You wait for a candle, a five minute candle to close above or below your level. And for some people, if they have a strategy, it might work out for them. But again, I'm explaining what works for me personally the best because I am a short-term scalper. This was an actual trade that I took on the S&P 500, and I'm gonna show you a live trading video of me taking this. However, what you're gonna see here is my stop loss is above this candle. The market eventually breaks above my stop loss. However, the selling was strong and the buying was weak, which made me stay in this trade. So I'm in short right here. I'm capitalizing on a downside move. A lot of people, what they will do is, is they will wait for a candle to close above or below their stop loss. In this example, it's above, uh, which right here. So now we saw a candle close above my stop loss. And if I were to wait for a candle to close, I would be out of this position. If I got out of that position, I would not have been able to capitalize on this downside sell-off. Also, time frame charts skew risk to reward, and I would say risk management is the number one aspect to every single trading strategy. Because let's say the market's selling off, and I wanna capitalize on taking the market long down here at my demand zone. What people will do is they will see the market hit their level, they will wait for it to move up and wait for that close, or wait for the five minute chart to show a lower wick. And once the lower wick is put in, then they get in just because there's a lower wick on a five minute chart. Well, a lot of people have to realize why a lower wick forms, or why a higher wick forms, or why a bounce actually occurs is because there is strong buying at the low. So wouldn't it be smart to buy there 
as it's happening in that present moment, instead of waiting for the five minute chart or a two minute chart or a three minute chart to close or show a lower wick, indicating that a wick is present and buying pressure is there, why not get in when the buying pressure is there instead of waiting for the candle or time to tell us when it is there? What if it's too late? If it's late, it's going to skew our Arista reward. In this example here, we see the S&P 500 selling off and coming into our demand zone and breaking the yesterday's low. What a lot of people will do is, if you use a three minute, five minute, whatever the case may be, will wait for a lower wick or wait for the candle to bounce off the level and wait for it to close. Now, if you were to do that, that would put you in the position of getting long on the S&P 500 at 50.24 call it 5025 at this yellow oval right here. Now what that would be or what that would mean is for us to be wrong on this analysis, we would have to put our stop loss under the low of day. So we're long at 5025 where my cursor's at. Our stop loss is at the low. We are risking 12 points, which means we have to get at least 24 points to achieve a two to one risk to reward ratio. This is if we were doing our analysis on a candlestick chart. Now pulling up the tape here, this is just a heat map. And what red bubbles show are aggressive sellers and what green bubbles show are aggressive buyers. The lines under price show passive buyers and the lines above price show passive sellers. Even if we have selling coming into the market, Selling means somebody also has to be buying. So down here at these lows, we can see really aggressive selling with no follow through and a larger bid getting filled. Remember, there's a seller and a buyer to every transaction. So if there is more aggressive sellers moving the market lower, getting absorbed with no follow through, that means there is actually a buyer entering the market despite all the selling entering. In this example, why the lower wick forms is a very large drop to the downside and a very strong upside reversal. Again, if we were to wait for the five minute candle to close, you could even use a one minute or a two minute in this instance, and my claim will be the same. Again, once I implemented this change into my trading, it made a huge difference in how I bought and sold because I'm a short term scalper looking to capitalize on short term price fluctuations. Even if we were to wait for the one minute to close, we would get long up here at the 5019s, 5020s. If we were to wait for a two minute to close, we would get in long here at the 20, uh, 5022s. Again, still putting our stop loss under the 5013s. However, if we were to use the tape in the present moment and zoom in, we would see all of this selling activity getting absorbed by a buyer and we could enter directly at that moment, call it 5016, 5017, right? And what that would do is, is going now to even a smaller time frame, such as a one minute chart, that would put us in the position to not get long at the 25s. But it would put us in the position to get long down here at these 17s or at these 18s when the buying came in in that present moment of the now. Again, time has no influence to a change of price. Time has an influence to the data that you are watching on that candlestick chart. If we were to get long at the 5017s, we would have a smaller risk and a higher reward. As traders, we are not putting ourselves in the position to have lower reward and higher risk. It has to be the opposite approach. So again, know the time frame trader that you are, short term. If you're a day trader, the now doesn't really matter to you that much if you're looking to hold for the next week. If you're an intraday trader, short term scalper, for me personally, this is what works out for me the best. And remember, it's only about how the data is organized. Price and volume does not change. If you got any value out of this, I would appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and comment if you have any questions. I'll be going through the comments. Peace.